was a kid, yeah. All a nigga wanna have was a very big scarf and three dollars in my pocket. Yeah. Instead, I got beat with a switch, but I don't give a fuck, but it's on my body. Scars all up on me, but I run around from everybody. Life lesson learned, I better learn from this bitch, nobody. She pushed me around, she didn't give no motherfucks about it. She broke my heart three times, but I ain't getting no What is up, everybody? It's JT Sports Match, you guys, with another video. This video, I'm here with my Baltimore Ravens versus the Pittsburgh Steelers post-game recap. And the Nas is going to give you guys my thoughts and my reaction on this game. So the Steelers defeat the Baltimore Ravens 28-24. The Steelers remained undefeated on the season at 7-0. The Ravens dropped to 5-2. And, and look, if I was to tell you before the game that the Steelers would win this game, despite being 3-9 on third down, Despite the Baltimore Ravens running for more than 200 yards on the ground, despite being outgained in total yards by Baltimore, 457 yards to 221, that the Steelers would still win this game, a lot of you guys would not believe me. But you want to know the only stat that matters in this game? Pittsburgh had one turnover. Baltimore had four. Lamar Jackson turned the ball over a lot this game. He really costed the Baltimore Ravens. And I know a lot of Ravens fans are going to blame the referees. But at the end of the day, Baltimore should have won this game. But they didn't win. Because the most important thing is that you have to be able to take care of the football. And now it's one of my biggest uh, factors going into this game. Which team was going to be able to take care of the football? A lot of people were under the speculation that Ben Rosberg was going to be the quarterback who ended up coughing the ball up a lot. But Lamar Jackson actually was. And turnovers are a big deciding factor in football. Okay? The team that wins the turnover battle, the majority of the time, at least 90% of the time, wins the game. Baltimore turned the ball over four times. Pittsburgh only turned the football over once. And that was an incredible big reason of why the Steelers won this game. Because on the stat sheet, I mean, everything is one side in Baltimore's favor. Baltimore held the ball for 35 minutes in this game. Pittsburgh, you know how long they held the ball for? 24. Okay? The majority of the times, 95% of the time if Baltimore holds the ball for 35 minutes on you, you're losing. So the fact that Baltimore held the ball for as long as they did and still lost is really surprising to me. Okay? And look, the Steelers' offense really struggled in this game, especially in the first half. In the first half, they weren't really able to get anything going at all. And this Ravens' defense, for the most part, had the Steelers' offense on clamps. You know what Baltimore did? Baltimore said, you want to know what, Pittsburgh? We're going to force you to throw the football downfield. We're not going to allow you to get anything underneath. And that's what Baltimore did. Baltimore basically dared Big Ben to throw the football downfield. And eventually, that's what he had to do. And when you throw the football downfield on a physical team like Baltimore, you're going to have the opportunities for pass interference. And Baltimore had a lot of them. Baltimore also had a lot of penalties called on them. And that was also a big reason why they lost this game. So Big Ben proved to everybody today that he does indeed have the ability to push the ball down the field. He does still have the arm strength, okay? And in the second half, Pittsburgh did a lot better containing the run than what they did in the first half. Because listen, in the first half, Baltimore was running butt wild on Pittsburgh's defense. And I told a lot of people, I said, listen, just because you stopped the Browns and you stopped Tennessee doesn't mean you're going to be able to stop the Baltimore Ravens. Because when it comes to stopping the Baltimore Ravens, it's a different dynamic. You have to account for Lamar Jackson's ability to run the football. And in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, like Baltimore, even though they were getting stopped late in the third quarter, they got back to run the football, and they were doing it fairly well, especially when they brought in their end of Georgia Tech and they started running that triple option. Oh, my goodness. That was just a beautiful thing to see. But at the end of the day, Pittsburgh got the stops when they needed them the most, okay? Baltimore was what? 8 of 15 on third down. Pittsburgh's 3 or 9 on third down. But Pittsburgh was able to create turnovers, which is why Pittsburgh was able to hang in this game. And a lot of you Ravens fans can blame the referees all you want to, but let's be honest. If Baltimore would have never turned the football over, they would have blown out the Pittsburgh Steelers, without a doubt. And if you don't want the referees to dictate the outcome of the game, 
don't allow the game to be close. But, I mean, listen, when you have a team like Baltimore that has physical corners on the outside, there is going to be the opportunity for pass interference calls. That's just going to happen, okay? And Baltimore's game plan was basically forcing Big Ben to throw the football downfield, and that's what he did. Tony Romo even said it. Tony Romo literally said during the broadcast that Baltimore is taking away the short intermediate passes and forcing Ben Rosberg to throw the football downfield. And when you throw the football downfield, pass interference is going to get called more times than not. So, I mean, for the Ravens, this is still a really good football team. This is the first matchup out of the two. These two teams are going to face off again. Hopefully, they don't get robbed of a primetime spot this time. Hopefully, they're playing on NBC Sunday Night Football instead of playing at a 1 p.m. Eastern Time kickoff that a lot of people weren't able to watch this game. Now, I was able to watch this game because I have access to all the NFL games, but a lot of people had to watch their regional games. So unless you were blessed enough to watch the Steelers and the Ravens, you had to watch like the Raiders take on the Browns or something like that. I don't know what games were on CBS. What, the Patriots and the Buffalo Bills? So, I mean, look, turnovers were the biggest reason why Pittsburgh won this game and why the Ravens lost. If you can't hold on to the football, you're not going to win. And Baltimore had held the ball for 35 minutes. And look, we got to talk about Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju Smith-Schuster has been criticized by so many people about his lackluster stats in the stat sheet. But what I've been telling people all this year is that it doesn't matter what the stats may show. In big moments, if Pittsburgh needs somebody to move the chains on third down or needs a big catch to keep a drive alive, Juju Smith-Schuster has been the guy. Juju Smith-Schuster has been having a DeAndre Hopkins-like season when he's been having 100 straight um, receiving yard games and things like that. His numbers don't look all that impressive. But what doesn't show in the stat sheet is how clutch Juju Smith-Schuster has been for the Steelers, not just in this game, but the whole entire season in general. When Pittsburgh needs somebody to keep the drive alive, that's what Juju Smith-Schuster has been. And you ask me, I'd rather have a guy who I can count on to keep the drive alive, to keep me in the game versus having a guy that's always having 150 yard receiving games and still losing. Okay? So Juju Smith-Schuster had a really good game. He was a big reason why Pittsburgh's offense was able to get going because when they needed somebody to make a play, he made it. Eric Ebron also had a really big game as well. A lot of people were going to watch Eric Ebron and how he fared against these Boston Ravens linebackers. And he fared up pretty well. So overall, this was one of the best games played this season. And that's crazy because Pittsburgh just got done playing one of the best games this season last week against Tennessee, which Tennessee has now lost to the Cincinnati Bengals. So the Steelers still remain undefeated. They have the best record in the AFC and for the Ravens, you lose um, Stanley, your best offensive lineman. He's now done for the season with a season-ending ankle surgery. I hope, well, season-ending ankle injury, excuse me. Hope everything goes right with that and that he's able to come back 100% next year. And the Ravens, man, like, the Ravens were able to do everything that they wanted to do to win this football game. Like, the Ravens were able to run the football. They had over 200 yards rushing, okay? They were able to control time possession. They were able to get Pittsburgh off the field on third down. They were able to keep the drive alive on third down. They were 8 of 15. Baltimore was able to execute their game plan. And even then, when Greg Roman decided to abandon the run game and decided to throw the football, which I don't understand the reason for that, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We'll never understand that. But, I mean, Pittsburgh was able to force turnovers. And this defense, once again, shows why this is the best defense in the NFL. And Ben Rosberger played a pretty solid game. He didn't turn the... I mean, he was pretty effective. Lamar Jackson turned the football over a lot. But, I mean, I know a lot of people are going to criticize Lamar Jackson in this game for turning the football over. And a lot of people are going to question Baltimore's legitimacy when it comes to being a Super Bowl contender. Listen, despite what the national media is going to say, Baltimore is still a Super Bowl contending team. Baltimore turned the football over four times. They were minus three in the turnover margin. And still had a chance to win this game to the very end. A lot of teams can't do that. A lot of teams can't turn the football over four times, be minus three in the turnover margin, and still have the opportunity to win the game. Do you know how good of a team you have to be for that to happen? So Baltimore, penalties, turnovers really killed them. Pittsburgh won. They remain undefeated on the season. 
And they have to face a Dallas Cowboys team that right now is reeling right now. We don't really know how the Cowboys are looking. We're going to see what they do against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday night in the next couple of hours. But it looks like a game that Pittsburgh should win pretty handily. But once again, if you have been a diehard Steelers fan, you know that the Steelers have a tendency to underplay the teams that they have no business losing to. And although Pittsburgh hasn't did that so far this season, I still want to see if Pittsburgh can do that for a complete season. So Pittsburgh is 7-0 right now. They still remain number one in the AFC North. They're up two games. Baltimore is 5-2. So let me know your thoughts on this game down in the comment section down below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.